Welcome back to the garage where we're continuing work on project E39. In the previous video we replaced the entire CCV system, a common maintenance item on any M54 BMW engine. In this video we're going to be doing another common big maintenance item for any BMW that has over 80,000 miles. Now this particular car only has 60,000 miles and if you're just now joining the channel be sure to check the link in the description below to see the playlist for this entire series so you can see how this all began. But getting back to the video at hand, we're going to be replacing the entire cooling system. That's right, from the radiator to the fan clutch to the water pump, everything. And that's because this system is made up of lots of plastic parts, and that plastic gets brittle over time and with miles. As it goes through lots of heat cycles, it just gets old and deteriorated, and it can leave you stranded at the side of the road if you don't keep on top of it. There's a lot of parts that are going to get replaced in this job, so let's go see what we're looking at. This represents all of the things we're going to be replacing in this E39's cooling system. Now, we're not going to be replacing absolutely everything, meaning every single hose, but we're going to be replacing the key components. So let's just start going down the list so you can see what we're doing. First of all, we're going to be replacing the radiator hoses. So these have plastic caps on either end. And while these caps make installation and, and taking apart really easy, it also means that they become brittle over time and especially these 90 degree angles can develop cracks and create a massive leak. Over here, same story with the coolant reservoir expansion tank. It's made of plastic, but over time, again, it can crack and leak. And then we've got a brand new radiator. This is a bare radiator. It's exactly like an OEM replacement BMW one for a fraction of the cost. Again, has plastic end tanks. And then we've got a new coolant sensor. The old one probably doesn't need to be replaced, but you might as well do it since it's such an inexpensive part. So then we have new accessory belts. This is your main serpentine belt. And then here is the AC belt. And then a new water pump pulley. So the one standard on the car is a plastic unit and it is not uncommon for it to develop cracks and shatter. So I decided to circumvent the problem entirely by getting this nice aluminum pulley. This actually came as a kit through Rhine and it comes with the pulley and this serpentine belt. This serpentine belt's a continental one, so it's high quality pieces. Then we have a new water pump. So the standard water pump has a plastic impeller and this is a HEPU brand pump, pretty high quality unit and it has a metal impeller that should not ever degrade. Then I've got a brand new uh, hydraulic fan clutch. The one on the car, not necessarily bad, but I decided if I'm going to be replacing things, you might as well start fresh here as well. This will help prevent any sort of overheating. And then we have a new thermostat. So the thermostat on these cars is pretty intricate. It has a sensor in it and it's got various gaskets and it's a plastic housing. So of course you have to replace this when you're going through the cooling system. Now, there are tons of manufacturers of these things, but every single aftermarket one has fairly poor reviews. And the only one that has consistent good reviews that it fits up and doesn't leak and lasts for a long time is the OEM BMW part. Unfortunately, what that means is you're gonna have to pay double, but if it means you don't have to go do the job twice within a year or so, it's worth paying the extra money. So this is a OEM BMW piece. Then we have a concentrate BMW coolant. It should only take a gallon of this, but I do have an extra gallon just in case. Then I have all new tensioners and accessory idler pulleys. It's a very good idea to replace these right around the 60 to 80,000 mile mark because these bearings in these pulleys, for whatever reason, wear out very quickly and you start getting a squeaky belt kind of noise and it's impossible to track it down unless you just replace all of the pulleys. And there's no point in replacing just one, you just replace them all. They're fairly inexpensive parts. You just take care of it. So these tensioners, we have a hydraulic one here and then a spring-loaded tensioner. This is for the AC belt, and this is for the main serpentine belt. These are made by INA, which I believe is direct supplier for BMW. So it's they're significantly cheaper than if you bought them from BMW, but it's the same quality of part. And then last but not least is a new expansion tank cap. This is an OEM BMW part. Again, not very expensive, definitely worth going OEM on this. So those are all the parts we're going to be replacing. It's not a very complicated job, it just takes a bunch of time to get to these things, draining the coolant and all of that. If you'd like to see the video where I disassemble all this, check out the link in the top of the video right now to take a look at that video. So this is the old radiator, you can see it's filthy, full of leaves. There's nothing that indicates it definitely needs replaced, but it's always at these end tanks 
the seals right here or the plastic itself that starts to become brittle and create leaks. It's just not even worth trying to reuse this thing. Just replace it because a replacement radiator is like 120 bucks. Just replace it. I will be transferring over this expansion tank hose. It's in good shape. However, one challenging aspect of this are these OEM style clamps. I'm gonna pull these off and replace them with worm gear style clamps. So it's really easy to disassemble in the future. Now, one thing I will note is that you must buy all of these parts kind of a la carte. Really any sort of all-inclusive kit that you might see from any sort of vendor doesn't usually either give you the highest quality parts or the best prices on parts. So I went through and specced out every single part here, comparing them against original BMW part numbers, cross-referencing, and finding the original manufacturer of everything. After all said and done, I ended up with basically OEM BMW parts at the same price as a pre-built kit from various online vendors that have inferior parts within them. If you have an E39-530i and are interested in purchasing this parts list, getting the exact same parts I'm showing here, then check in the description below where I'll put a link where you can purchase and download this parts list online. All right, let's go ahead and get started.
right, there we are. The cooling system is now completely refreshed. Everything is basically new and the engine bay looks that much better for it. It really pays off to clean all the components as you're going through here because when it's put back together, it looks like a new car again. That's all it takes. Just a little extra elbow grease to really make it look nice. Thankfully, the car started right up. No oil leaks, no coolant leaks. It sounds great. We are on the right track with bringing this car back around and making sure it's reliable for a long time to come. I installed one of the cabin air filters just because I won't be in that corner anymore. I left that one still off because I will be attending to the brake fluid in the next video. That's right, in the next video, we're gonna be changing all the rest of the fluids in this car, including the brake fluid, the transmission, and the differential. So, until then, we'll see you all again next time.